All right, hello everyone. Uh, this is going to be a tutorial for how to change the debounce time on any QMK uh, compatible keyboard. So that's going to be most custom mechanical keyboards and anything made by Keychron. I personally have a K10 Pro, so that's what uh, this tutorial will specifically do, but it should be applicable to pretty much any keyboard that this is possible on. Debounce is essentially a period of time after you press some kind of switch, like a key on a keyboard where any further input is ignored. And this is because most switches are not 100% precise and kind of flip from being on and off uh, very rapidly while you're pressing it before actually being fully pressed and fully changing states. And that just prevents, you know, one key press from uh, causing multiple uh, presses to be registered. It'll always be one press every single time. On most keyboards, this debounce time is around uh, you know, five to eight milliseconds, uh, but there are some keyboards where this time is a lot higher, especially on low profile and cheaper keyboards. The problem with this variance among keyboards on the market is that games that require one framers as part of the speed run, like uh, Red Ball 4 and Super Mario Bros, will have different outcomes happen even with the exact same inputs, depending on when in the frame you press the button and how long the debounce time is. If you have a keyboard with a high debounce time, it could make one framers in some games impossible to hit. And similarly, if the debounce time is really low, it can cause tons of inputs to just not be registered because they are being input in between frames. By setting the debounce time of your keyboard to match the amount of milliseconds that each frame takes, you can guarantee that any time you press a button on the keyboard for a short amount of time through a flick, it will go through as a one-framer on the game. So without further ado, let's show how to change the firmware on one of these QMK compatible keyboards to have a debounce time set to the desired length. Okay, so go ahead and click the first link in the description and you'll be greeted by this setting up your QMK environment uh, guide. So the first thing you'll want to do is get some kind of text editor. You probably already have one. Uh, I recommend Notepad++, but uh, even the stock Notepad app that comes with Windows should work. And then next, we're going to want to install this program called QMK MSYS. Um, I don't really know how things work out on other platforms, but you should just be able to follow the guide and do what it tells you. So we're going to go ahead and click this link. We're going to download the latest version. Uh, you're going to want to download the .exe file. And then we're going to go ahead and open it. And just follow the installer. Uh, you can create a desktop shortcut if you want. Uh, but yeah, make sure it installs the drivers. All right, yeah, so that'll take a minute, but uh, once it's done, go ahead and click finish and go ahead and type in QMK uh, to make it show up in the search bar. All right, so once this opens, uh, the command that you're gonna wanna run depends on which keyboard you have. If you have a custom mechanical keyboard that's not built by Keychron, uh, you're just gonna, run, gonna wanna run the first command in the description, which is QMK setup. If you have a Keychron keyboard that does not support Bluetooth, you're going to want to run the second command in the description, which is QMK setup, uh, and then it's Keychron slash QMK firmware. However, if you do have a Keychron keyboard that does support Bluetooth, you're going to want to run the third command in the description, which uh, just specifies this branch that's Bluetooth underscore playground after uh, that second command. So uh, for the K10 Pro, this is the command that I'm going to run. Uh, go ahead and hit yes. All right, so once that's done, go ahead and open up File Explorer, go to this PC, the C drive, users, um, your whatever user you have, uh, and then go to QMK underscore firmware. All right, so next you'll go to keyboards, um, you know, navigate to Keychron if you have a Keychron keyboard, and find whichever model you have. So I have the K10 Pro. And then you're going to want to go to config.h and open it with whatever text editor you have. I'm just going to use notepad. And then at the top of this file, after this uh, comment here at the top, uh, go ahead and hit enter a few times and then go ahead and do uh, pound define. 
uh, debounce in all caps. And then this number that you specify here is going to be uh, the amount of time in milliseconds that the debounce is. So uh, for Red Ball 4, uh, since the frames are you know 33.33 milliseconds on average, uh, you round that to 33. If it was Super Mario Bros. 1, which is uh, roughly 16.67 milliseconds per frame, uh, you would round to 17 probably. Uh, so there we go. Uh, gotta go ahead and hit save there and exit out. And then click on rules.mk uh, and open it with your favorite text editor. And I'll go ahead and zoom in here so it's a little easier to see. Uh, and then after, you know, on whatever line, you're going to want to write debounce underscore type equals and make sure make sure this is in all caps uh it'll be in the description as well and then you're going to want to type in sym underscore eager underscore pk uh, this whole line is going to be in the description so you can just copy it from there and paste it in now go ahead and save that and close out now go back to qmk msys so to test that the changes that we made to the firmware are going to work and that we've installed everything correctly, we're going to go ahead and build the firmware for the keyboard. So for the K10 Pro, this is the command that we need to use. But if you have a different keyboard, you just put the name of the keyboard in here. Uh, so, you know, other common ones would be the V6, uh, the K5 Pro, um, but uh, the K10 as well, but uh, we'll leave that as the K10 Pro for my keyboard. Uh, so go ahead and run that, and if it runs without any errors, we should be good to go. And my fault there, uh, we're going to need to go to the uh, QMK underscore firmware directory for it to be able to find uh, this folder. So go ahead and go to C type in CD uh, QMK underscore firmware to navigate to that directory, and then run the command again. All right, so it looks like that finished without any errors, so that's a sign that we are good to go. But first, we need to switch to the live camera here, because we need to put our keyboard into bootloader mode so that we're able to flash the new firmware. So on the K10 Pro, uh, there's two switches on the back. Uh, first of all, make sure your keyboard, if you're on a Windows computer, is on the, on the Windows side there. Uh, but yeah, I have a switch on the back that switches between uh, the very left is on cable, very right is on Bluetooth, and the middle is off. So we're going to want to put the switch in the middle here, uh, and that will turn it off. And then we're going to want to hold down the escape key, and then turn the keyboard back on. So now the keyboard is in bootloader mode and is ready for the new firmware, and you'll be able to see that my keystrokes aren't doing anything, which is actually a good sign. All right, so go ahead and right click the Windows button uh, and click on Settings and Accessibility, Keyboard, and then enable the on-screen keyboard because otherwise you're not gonna be able to run the command to flash the firmware. So go ahead and hit the up arrow to go back to the previous command. And then we're gonna wanna add colon flash to the end. And I'm gonna have to switch over to my normal Windows install to do this since it wasn't working in the sandbox. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and hit enter. Uh, and yeah, once it's done, you should see your keyboard light up again and it should be working again. Now, if it's not, uh, which happened to me a few times, uh, there is a solution, uh, assuming that it isn't just a bad firmware. Uh, you go ahead and right click on the Windows button and hit Device Manager. And then under Keyboards, you're going to want to right click on all of these and hit Uninstall Device and then restart your computer. And that should fix the problem. But yeah, if your keyboard's working, uh, go ahead and type in Scan Rate uh, Test. Uh, you can also find this link in the description. Uh, and just start hitting the spacebar or any key. And you'll see that, you know, most presses, if they're quick, come out to roughly 33 milliseconds. And that is huge for getting one framers uh, in Red Ball 4. I'll give a demonstration really quick. All right, so I'm just gonna flick the space bar uh, really quick. Uh, you know, probably pressing the button for, you know, around 10 milliseconds or whatever. Definitely not 33 and definitely inputting between frames. But you can see that none of my inputs are getting dropped and that's because they're all getting extended to at least 33 milliseconds because of the increased debounce time. 
Uh, and, you know, these consistent one-frame inputs are huge because it makes double jumping extremely consistent, since it requires a one-frame jump on, uh, on the ground, uh, for the second jump to be able to be initiated. So, uh, definitely a really huge improvement for speedrunning this game. Uh, there's no more stupid keyboard lottery that people have to, you know, deal with. You can just know that you can get a keyboard that will have a good, uh, favorable debounce time. Uh, and that's really, really cool. So anyways, uh, I think that's where I'm going to, you know, cut the video off here. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And I hope that this will be a big benefit for the speedrunning community for quite a few games. Uh, but yeah, thanks for watching.